If you're looking to add a wireless video system to your camera rig but aren't sure which one to get, then check out my video as I test out and compare four different systems that range from price from $698 all the way up to $5,480. So here are the systems I have for you guys today. Uh, the cheapest one is from Came TV. Uh, then another very similar one is from R2 Tech. Uh, after that is a system from Cinegears, which is a lot more robust, full featured for professional applications. Uh, and finally, the most expensive kit is from Hollyland. So before I get into all the specs and my opinions, uh, I will first take out these systems outside uh, and test out their range and performance. Uh, I, I'm going to be mounting the transmitter on the Sony FS5 uh, either through the HDMI out port uh, or SDI ports and I'll walk away from the camera with the receiver connected to my director's monitor which will also be actually recording the incoming signal uh, on the Shogun Inferno. Uh, so that this way you guys can see for yourself just what kind of quality of signal I am actually getting. Alright, let's get started. So this is the first one from Came TV. Anyways, I'm going to go further out and see how the signal goes. Here I am 50 feet out. There you can see the distance. So like I said, 50 feet out, you can see me here and I'm going to go further. So now you can see me, I'm like tiny up here walking in the camera. Um, but I'm still getting signals, so yeah, this is 150 feet away. So I'm gone from the view behind the house and uh, 200 feet away according to Google Maps and now I'm gonna go even further and now the audio is cutting out and as you can see the signal is cutting out and I'm right now 400 feet away and I've got uh, two houses in between me and the thing so still getting signal but it is kind of cutting out every so on All right, I'm doing the next one, which is the R2 Tech. And uh, to be honest, it looks almost identical to the Came TV one. Like the video feed looks identical. It has that, that horrible compression on it again. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna go test out the range. And uh, I can hear the audio perfectly. Uh, There's the same, about the same amount of delay as with the Came TV one. And I am at 150 feet and again it's uh, it's working no problem and I hear the audio perfectly. So I'm going to keep on walking again and I am at 200 feet away now behind one house and again I'm still getting the audio perfectly without cutting out and I see the video. All right now I am 400 feet away and I'm starting to hear the audio cut out. You can still hear it, but it's not perfect. It's cutting out a little bit here and there. Again, I'm 400 feet away behind two houses. So yeah, I'm still getting a signal. So these are the first two systems that I wanted to show you guys uh, because I think it makes sense to divide actually all of these systems that I have into two categories. Uh, the ones that I just showed you are for the low budget indie filmmaker uh, or maybe even like a small video production company that uh, shoots mainly on DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. Uh, now these cameras only have HDMI out ports and they also, they're usually very small cameras. So for those kind of productions, you probably want something smaller, lighter, uh, and you will not really care about pro SDI connections. Uh, also, you'll probably be looking at something more affordable. In that category is the Came TV Crystal 800 system uh, and the R2 Tech DVLM100 wireless video system. Both are almost identical in build and the features that they offer. Uh, both can output the signal over HDMI out, uh, out connection and actually through Wi-Fi output. First thing I'll say is that I hate the micro HDMI connection. Uh, it's not reliable and, and those micro HDMI cables break so easily in a real production. Uh, and it just so happens that both of these systems use a micro HDMI connection on the transmitter side. Uh, the receiver is actually full HDMI, but not the transmitter. Why the manufacturers just didn't much bother using a full HDMI connection, I have no idea. Uh, so I hope if these companies do actually come up with an updated version uh, to these systems, then please 
uh, you know, use an actual full HDMI connection. Now, another way you can output the signal is through Wi-Fi. This allows you to watch the video on a, a mobile uh, iOS device, such as on an iPhone or iPad Touch. Uh, you just literally install their app, uh, log into the Wi-Fi network that these receivers uh, create, and that's it. Uh, this is great since it actually allows you to use your mobile devices as a sort of a improvised director's monitors. So what do I think of these? Uh, they're both almost identical. Uh, it's, I actually damaged the Came TV unit uh, uh, during my last film shoot. Uh, and that is actually partially the reason why it was uh, cutting out the signal when I was testing it outside right now. Um, I'm going to be getting a replacement unit soon though. Uh, but when I did test it on the, on the last film production, uh, it worked flawlessly. So um, here's my thoughts. These units are great if you're on a budget. Uh, just keep in mind that they're not going to be as durable, first of all, as the higher end system. Uh, and also they all have a noticeable lag in the signal. The latency is actually, um, I would say, sort of a limitation of using HDMI connections. Uh, it can be even more delayed if you're using it with certain particular HDMI cameras or monitors. Uh, also, both systems can send 1080p signal uh, up to 60 frames per second, uh, but it's always compressed. And as you can see from the footage, the compression uh, is pretty bad uh, and, and noticeable, I think. So if you just need a wireless video for your client uh, or director to monitor the shots, and you don't really care that it's not uh, real time and that it's got some noticeable compression artifacts, uh, then both of these will work. I would definitely not recommend these for pulling uh, focus. Now, since they're both identical in every feature except the price, then uh, I would suggest getting the cheaper Came TV version. Uh, they're both simple to connect uh, and they pair automatically. The only settings you can really change on these is if you wanna uh, display the video and signal information on the receiver. Uh, also, you can adjust the strength of the signal in case you, let's say, don't need uh, such a long range. Uh, and let's say you also want to spare your camera operator from getting uh, cancer prematurely. Uh, both systems do transmit audio and they both use uh, easy to find Sony NPF style batteries. Uh, there's also a DC N connection, so you can plug them to an outlet if need be. And yes, they're both pretty much identical, aside from the slightly different uh, edge and kind of bevel design uh, on the front. Uh, they are the same, exactly same size, weight, and really the functionality. They are both rated to work at a distance of 800 meters or 2,600 feet. Uh, but you and I know that this is really just advertising BS. And in reality, the range is not really gonna be uh, that good unless you're in a perfect condition such as you know, open line of sight, no other signals uh, interfering. Uh, still, the range on these is plenty uh, and it can be definitely used on a film set where let's say the monitor might be in the next room or a block away from the camera. Uh, I used it on the film and I had no problems with it. Now, if you want something professional, uh, then you really are going to be looking at spending uh, more money. Of course, for that extra cost, uh, you're gonna get a much better quality of signal and also no latency. So let's take a look at the test with the second category of the wireless video systems. So this is the Cinegears Ghost Eye 600M. I got it set up through SDI. And uh, the great thing I noticed right away is that it seems like there's no delay whatsoever. Plus I'm getting a nice clean uh, HD signal. So all right, I started recording. I'm also getting nice audio through the headphones. And anyways, I'm gonna keep on going. and. Seems like there's no delay whatsoever, at least I don't see it. This is me stamping my foot. <laughs> you can just kind of see for comparison. Now it is much heavier. It's one thing I noticed. Uh, and part of it is because it's being powered here, you know, by a V-mount battery. And okay, here I am. I see my dog is in front of the house. <laughs> And I'm 150 feet out, and again, don't see any delays or any uh, like degrading in the image signal. So right now I'm at 200 feet, and uh, one behind one of the houses there. But anyways, I'm going to keep on walking to 400 feet now. So this is at 400 feet behind two homes, and I'm not getting a signal anymore. It's uh, yeah, up here it's not showing any signal strength. And up here on the monitor, it's just saying waiting for connection. So I'm going to he start heading back and see 
how soon the signal comes back. I'm starting to hear audio and I get signal now. Okay. So this is uh, this is 300 feet. So I'm 300 feet and you can see the signal is kind of cutting in and out. And it shows me that I have signal here, but it's only one bar. All right, so I've got the Holy Land Cosmo 2000 transmitter. Now, one thing I don't like about it is that it has to be powered uh, through a Limo connection. And in order for that to work, you gotta have an external power source. So in this case, I have to break out another uh, V-mount battery and just kind of attach it here to a tripod, so. All right, so we get the signal going here and let's just start walking. All right, so here I am at 50 feet and I can hear the audio, I can see myself and let's see if there's a delay. Uh, don't really see any delay. If there is, it's so small, it's maybe like a couple frames, but it's definitely not a, and uh, not something you're gonna notice. Now here I am at a 150 feet away from the transmitter. And uh, as you can see, still getting really good signal. In fact, it's showing here that the signal is perfect. Um, and uh, again, no delays that I can notice here. Now the video signal is starting to go down. I got two bars in there. Two bars visible here. And I am at 200 feet now and behind one house. I can still hear the audio perfectly and I can still see the video. So let's go even further. The audio is, is cut out. It's kind of coming in and out. The video I can still see. And now the video is gone. And I am 300 feet away. It's kind of going in and out. Let's keep on walking. And this is at 400 feet behind the two houses. And it's kind of going in and out. As you can see. So, as you guys can see, both systems perform great and the quality on both is identical. Uh, the latency is technically there, but it's less than one millisecond, so it's not really something you're gonna notice. Um, these can definitely be used to pull focus uh, off of a monitor. Now, they're both advertised with a working range of up to 2,000 feet or 600 meters, uh, and they both send a 1080p signal up to 60 frames per second, and they're both encrypted actually signals. Just by looking at them, the quality is the same, uh, but here's where the Cinegear system has a slight advantage. It can actually transmit uh, an uncompressed 10-bit 422 signal. Uh, so it's broadcast ready, and you can even use it to record wirelessly to an external recorder. Now the Holy Land system is supposedly also uncompressed, but I have not been able to actually find out what is the limit of the color space uh, that it can transmit. Uh, the Holy Land has one special feature, uh, which is the software optimization for ARRI mini handle replay. Now, if you're not using an ARRI camera system, then you probably don't care about that. Um, now, one thing that did annoy me on the Holy Land transmitter is that there's no built-in battery plate uh, on the transmitter. This means that you will always need to work with a camera a system that has uh, either power out or a battery that has PTAP connection. Uh, in my case, I was actually using the Sony FS5, and so I really had to just attach an extra V-mount battery to the tripod just so that I could power the transmitter. You can, of course, do that with the Cinegear system too, but since the Cinegear's transmitter also has a built-in Sony NPF battery plate, uh, it means that I could keep the whole camera rig a lot smaller and, and lighter. And this is gonna be especially helpful if you're trying to fly the camera, let's say, on a stabilizer, uh, and you don't want to or can't take the extra weight. Uh, both of these systems have DC power in all of the units and also both receivers have a built-in V-mount battery plate uh, on the back. The Holy Land receiver has a, an annoying cable though that is going from the battery plate into the actual receiver. I'm not sure why they couldn't just put uh, that cable internally like the Cinegears receiver. And now both systems uh, can also cross-convert the SDA and HDMI signals uh, in either directions. And both of the transmitters uh, have an SDI loop-out connection. Uh, also, both systems come with a nice hard protective uh, cases and all the power cables necessary. 
Uh, Hollyland one also provides this really nice and sturdy and I, I would actually say it's probably one of the the best mounting arms I've ever used. In the end both systems were great for professional use uh, but considering that the Senegear system is almost half the price I would recommend it over the Hollyland kit. Uh, also I've actually used the Senegear system and some of their cheaper kits and they've all worked great over long term real use on a film production where uh, they tend to take you know an occasional beating here and there especially when a certain AC who shall remain nameless for now uh, happens to drop the director's monitor or just leaves it lying around on the ground unattended anyways hopefully you guys found this video uh, helpful if you did then please let me know by hitting that like button and sharing this video with other gearheads also while you're at it make sure to follow me on my website by signing up to my newsletter in exchange you'll get free lads that i use on my films plus you'll be notified of other early uh, exclusive stuff that i post or for example if i find discount codes for camera gear and other cool things like that uh, anyways, uh, all the links as always are in the description of this video. My name is Tom Antos and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!